Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're going old school TIG today. I've got an old Lincoln Tombstone AC buzz box, and I've got an old uh, do-it-yourself rectifier that I hooked up to it, and we're going to do scratch start TIG. Now that's the old rectifier I traded for that years ago, and uh, it works. It's really heavy duty. And stick around to the end of the video, and we're going to run some really noisy beads on a block of steel with this thing. Stick around a little bit later in the video. I'll run several beads, and we'll kind of check out and see what this little uh, buzz box, dry rig, scratch start thing can do. Well, that's the setup. The rectifier is set on top of an AC uh, Lincoln Tombstone welder. Got the uh, stinger basically hooked into one cable that was already attached. Probably not the best way to have it all hooked up, but just for the purposes of a quick demo on this machine. I just clamped the things to the cables that were already attached. And you can see right there some really heavy, heavy cables and diodes and whatnot uh, attached to the, uh, the uh, big aluminum channel buses to kind of separate everything. It's a heavy-duty unit, at least 35 years old. I traded for it uh, over 20 years ago, and I know a little bit of the story behind it, so it, it's an old homemade rectifier. But you got ele uh, electrode negative coming out right here and that's the one that goes to the TIG torch. Speaking of the TIG torch, I've got an old, old TIG torch that I traded for over 30 years ago. It's a CK. Now look at the name on that. It's Conley and Kleppen. I haven't, I didn't even know that's what CK stood for until I got this old torch out. But that's an old heavy-duty air-cooled TIG torch from CK. Been around a while. See the valve on there is to turn the gas off when you're done. You need that if you're using a dry rig. You can you can weld without it, but you'll waste a lot of gas because you'll forget to walk over to the flow meter and, and turn it off when you're done running a bead. And speaking of the flow meter, again, I traded for this thing over 30 years ago. It's a heavy duty Airco flow meter. Thing weighs about 10 pounds. It's old, it's, it's heavy duty, it's rugged, it'll probably be around a long time. I've had it well over 30 years and I think it was pretty old when I traded for it. So it, it's rugged. But the argon hose from the TIG torch goes to the flow meter, the uh, cable goes to the welding machine, and that's about it. But I'm also going to use a little different wrinkle in this because I've always found that scratch start TIG wasn't that big a deal to get started. That wasn't the deal that was stopping. You know, when you got to whip out, snap out, that's when, you, that's, when, that's when it's hard to be delicate. Like I say, lighting up is no problem, but when you trail out, you got to speed up and then whip out. And of course, you lose argon shielding. And you're going to have some little minimal defect that on pipe is very easy to file and brush, but on stainless steel sheet, food service equipment, or something like that, it would be very difficult to clean that up. So being able to stop and maintaining shielding is a real big deal for a lot of things. Back in the day when I was uh, doing a lot of pipe welding, I would have my fitter just hold the, uh, hold the stinger to the tab in his hands, and when I'd get finished and get ready to whip out, I'd just say, okay, and he'd pull it apart. And, and I'd stop the weld. And, and the benefit of that is I'd maintain gas shielding and uh, wouldn't have to do all that filing and brushing. So, uh, you know, it's not good for everything. It's, you still have to kind of trail out on a root pass to keep from leaving a crater, uh, fish eye, whatever. Uh, but it does have a lot of value. Like you could do a lot of stainless steel food service type stuff, uh, sheet metal, with a scratch start TIG. And uh, if you're able to stop and maintain shielding, it makes a huge difference. So. I put together a little foot pedal. It's just a switch. It's not an amperage control. It's just a simple switch made out of a knife switch, uh, like for an automotive application. And so it's very crude. A couple of, couple of brackets here. Knife switch. It's like a main shutoff switch for a vehicle or, or uh, some tractor or something like that so that the five-year-old can't go start it. And so here's what that looks like when you can uh stop the weld and maintain shielding. Big difference. One of these poles here will be just where they're coming out of the welding machine. Now this video is not about building a DC rectifier so just forget about that. Imagine this was just the negative output on any DC stick welder. A Miller Thunderbolt or a Lincoln DC welder any DC stick welder. You, the negative side for, for TIG welding steel would go to the TIG torch. In this case I've got it attached to one of the poles on the foot pedal, and then the other, the other one is, is going to the TIG torch, which again is an old, old CK TIG torch. And the other line is the argon line that runs to the TIG torch, just hooked up to the flow meter. Simple setup, but still being used all over the place on construction sites. 
and then the, the stinger will hook to the other one or, or I can hook directly to the well, uh, TIG torch to the, to the other one. So basically when I'm welding along here, I've got the circuit is uh, running current through there and then when I want to stop, I just bang my foot on the pedal, knife switch opens and it stops the, it stops the weld. Maybe 25 bucks worth of stuff. Ordered this off, knife switch off Amazon. Um, you know, a little finagling, a little making brackets and putting it together with a couple of pieces of board and it's a switch. Talking to a friend of mine just, just today and he was talking about when he got out of welding school, he went into the dairy work and, and doing, doing two inch stainless, uh, SCED 10 stainless for, uh, for food service. And, uh, you know, they said, there's your welding machine. He said, where's the foot pedal? And they said, what foot pedal? There's no foot pedal. There's your welding machine. Miller Thunderbolt hooked up to a TIG torch and a bottle of Argon um, stinger hooked onto a tab on the, on the TIG torch. That is very common in uh, construction because it's, it's rugged, it's durable, and it's, now it relies on the welder's skill to compensate for foot pedal, amperage control, all that stuff. But it is, people are doing, people are diamond in welds out there every day using a simple setup like that. It's not the best setup. It's just rugged. Also, when you've got it like this, now your TIG torch laying around is not hot. So that's kind of a good thing if you sit on it, right? So anyway, hold on, I'm getting a call. Hey, baby doll, how you doing? Hey, can I get you back? Air gas guy's calling me. Helium shortage? You're right. That is total BS. I'm coming down there. What up, Grandma? Okay, back to reality here. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do before I get started here is I'm going to swap out this big uh, collet body cup and whatnot. It's a number eight cup. It's kind of got crud on the inside of it. This thing's been sitting in a gang box for years. But I'm going to put on what's called a stubby gas lens, also from CK. So first thing, I've got to swap out the little Teflon insulator to one that allows the cup to seat on it. I'll screw in the stubby gas lens, and bang. Now all of a sudden, I just shorten that whole TIG torch by a lot, and uh, it also is going to get a lot better gas coverage. I'll put in the old 2% lanthanated electrode. And here's another tip for you. On a scratch start rig like this, you can actually start the arc by flicking the wire like that against the tip. Boom. Some guys actually actually flick it with one end and then flip it in their hand like a, you know, like the uh, drummer from Def Leppard or something and flips the drumstick around and then feed the other end so any contaminants are on the end that's not used. So there you go. There's the first bead. You notice how noisy that was. That is a noisy, noisy arc on this thing. That was one thing that jumped out at me. It's a, it's a fairly decent arc. It, it, it's capable of doing some stuff, but man, so much more noisy than I'm used to with all the inverters that I've been doing for, for a long time now. I'll show you. I'll compare it here in just a second when I get finished with this arc. I left the noise kind of up so you could tell the difference. Boom. And now here's an inverter. This is that HTP 221 unit. The argon flow is, is actually louder than the arc. Not saying that's good or bad, it just is what it is. Come back here with a second bead, stacking it. You can notice, a I notice a little bit of difference on, on this arc. It seems to have quite a bit of force to it. Like almost, a, it looks almost like I'm, uh, I've got a small cup with a lot of argon flow and it's pushing down in the puddle, but that's not what it is. I've got a normal argon flow, but you can see the depressions it's kind of making. And I don't know what is going on there. Maybe it's just the, uh, you know, the, the, how the waveform, the, the, the current is rougher, not as smooth as, a, as an inverter, but it's different. Might actually be better for some applications. Certainly, it's showing here that, that a setup like this is capable of making a, a decent looking weld or a decent quality weld. And I'm not doing anything to write home about here on, on this block of steel, but I'm just trying to, you know, since that TIG torch has been in a box for 20 years, I figured I might as well just run some beads rather than try to weld anything with it. And there's using the foot pedal, maintaining that shielding on the end, so. And there's what, you, what it looks like uh, stacking a bunch of beads, so, you know. Some success. All right, coming very soon in, in a video, I'm going to use the same setup, same torch and everything, and a TIG finger to do a 6G sanitary tubing 2-inch uh, weld test. Why 6G? Because if we lay it on the table and roll it, we don't learn nothing. Besides, someone out there might be about to take a test like this to get a job. It might mean a difference between a paycheck 
and not. So that's what we're doing uh, either next or sometime very soon anyway. May not be the next video, but it'll be very soon. And also, work, it's still working on this boom arm to hang that wire feeder off of for the MIG welder. I'm still waiting on a part to come in, and we will get it done, but uh, it, it, it's coming shortly. Well, thanks for watching, and visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. And remember, I've got another site, Welding-TV.com, where we use a different video service instead of YouTube, uh, because some schools are blocking YouTube now. And the Welding-TV.com site is also where you can purchase TIG fingers and DVDs, and incidentally, the 2012 YouTube compilation uh, package will be up there on the Welding-TV very soon.